Today, RV Insider tells you how flying pumpkins can help save lives. Find out what the school was like 75 years ago. An RV Insider asked students how much is too intense for gym class. All this and more is next on the Tuesday, November 16th edition of RV Insider. Hello and welcome to RV Insider. I'm Courtney Gavin. And I'm Gabrielle Turkanian. And here's today's news. Any FBLA member that plans on attending regional competitive events at Mercer County College in January must take a practice test in the category or categories that they want to compete in. It is your responsibility to come in during any of the following times to take your practice test. You may schedule however many dates and times you need to take up to three tests. Please see or email Ms. Gray at cgray at rvrhs.com with any questions. Our cafeteria trays are disappearing at an alarming and expensive rate. Please make sure to return all trays as soon as possible. Students are also reminded that trays are not to be thrown away in the trash. This fall, Prickett's Farm in Lumberton held its annual pumpkin chuck-in contest to raise money for ALS. RV Insider reporter Malik Johnson has more. Many people showed up for the annual pumpkin chunking event held at Prickett's Farm in Lumberton. There were a few events going on at the Prickett's Farm that varied from the pumpkin chunking to the Pirates vs. Ninja show in the Hayes. The event was held to raise money for research on ALS. Here's what a few workers had to say about it. Um, ALS is also known as Lou Gehrig's disease and um, we're here at the Prickett Farm and Kay Prickett passed away a couple years ago. Um, ALS um, doesn't have a cure and there's no way to determine that someone has it prior to. So um, we're raising money to um, give to ALS Foundation to, for research on a cure for ALS. Um, and everything is in memory of Kay Prickett. ALS, the, the farm here is called Prickett's Farm and the owner, uh, Phil and Kay Prickett, had offered their farm as a place for us to test five years ago. And during that same year, Kay Prickett was actually diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease or ALS. And as a result, we decided that we would take advantage of the fact that we were throwing pumpkins at his farm and actually turn it into an event to raise money for the cause. We continue to do this fundraiser here in memory of Kay Prickett and all the funds, everything we collect today goes to the cause, 100%. The main question that was asked when people came to this event is, how far does your pumpkins fly? Over the years, our longest throw was actually last year, and the machine that we're operating today called the Gourd Sword threw a pumpkin 684 feet. That's all from this year's Pumpkin Shumpkin. I'm Malik Johnson signing off for RV Insider. Any student who will be receiving a gold, blue, or red academic card for the first marking period in the next few weeks must fill out a participation form. The participation forms are available outside the Student Activities Office and are due by Wednesday, November 17th. Remember that you only need to fill out one form once for the entire year. Arby's Class of 2012 is selling Rancocas Valley Spirit Bracelets for $2 each. Please Email Mrs. Gray at cgray at rvrhs.com or Mrs. Cadlick at jcadlick at rvrhs.com to purchase your RV spirit bracelets. It's a cute addition to a holiday gift or a stocking stuffer. The junior class thanks you for your support. RV has been open for about 75 years and there have been many changes in the school from when it first opened as Mount Holly High School. RV Insider has more. Rancocas Valley Regional High School is celebrating its 75th anniversary since the election of their first official school board. RVTV interviewed a few of the longtime staff members and teachers to find out what changes they've experienced during their years here at RV. Well, a lot has changed here at RV, especially uh, for me. I went to school here, I graduated in 2000, so a lot has changed, especially here in the TV department. We've made a lot of changes as far as set pieces, cameras, teleprompters, all kinds of equipment in the control room. We also have upgraded our production truck to a full-size ambulance. I've been here 38 plus years and the building has really changed. We have a new library that used to be the, um, the girls' gym. We have a new gym. I graduated from RV in 1986. Uh, as far as how the library's changed over time, we 
obviously have a much more diversified collection with the age of DVDs and uh, we've seen videotapes kind of come and go. The computers, when I was in school here, I don't think the library had one computer. I came to RV in 1976, so what is that, 34 and a half years? I used to direct all the plays in the old theater, in the old auditorium, which only seats, I think, maybe 320 people. Uh, very, very tiny stage, and we had these huge levers that we had to pull to operate the lighting, and the lighting was always going down. I actually went to school here a while back, and I've also been here for 27 years, and um, I think the athletic program has uh, grown with the number of sports that we have now. Um, a lot of times we didn't have freshman teams, now we have freshman teams also, and uh, the success of the program is, uh, is, is enormous. Two main things that I really see as a difference uh, when I first started here, and one of course there was no technology, so we had no computers. We used to copy things off one of um, a Xerox machine where you actually had to put the ink in and you turned it this way and that made the copies. Really, um, in some of the years I've been here, we've only had 1,200 students, so the halls were really uh, pretty empty and uh, the classes were smaller and uh, things were a lot more intimate because of the uh, smaller numbers here at, at RV. For RV TV, I'm Brett Axler. Ms. Bruchansky's class is preparing holiday cards for our troops in Iraq. Do you know anyone who is stationed there who would enjoy receiving a card? Please give an address information to Mrs. Bruchansky via one of the following methods. Email cbruchansky at rvrhs.com, a note in Ms. Bruchansky's mailbox, or a note in Ms. Baldega's mailbox. Physicals for all levels of girls basketball will be held on November 17th from 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Players who are not playing a fall sport and plan to play a winter sport must complete the physical packet before they take the physical. Physical packets can be picked up in the athletic trainer's office, in the nurse's office, and online. Make sure you have the entire form and it is completed. The goal in gym class is to compete, but do some students take it too far and get too competitive? RV Insider reports. Ask the questions. How intense is too intense for gym class? Whether it was us or someone else, we all remember that one group of kids who seemed to take the activities way more seriously than others thought was necessary. No matter how many decades pass or how gym activities change, these groups of kids will always exist and we will always question how intense is too intense for gym class. We approach students asking if they think it is annoying when people get competitive in gym class. I am competitive, but not that competitive where it gets so intense where if you lose you're really mad. I mean, I know people who really want to win and then they lose and they're really mad. You know, you probably know people like that too. Us, like, it's just a game. There's no need to push, shove, or hurt anybody because that's how people get hurt in gym, first off. It's just way too much. Like, I I'm not that into sports, but I get people are, so, I mean... It's cool if you want to do your whole thing, you know, you should have a separate game that you can, you know, express yourself and get all aggressive, but for me, I'm just, you know, I'm just here to have a good time, you know, enjoy my gym class, so. We ask various students, does winning matter in gym class? What type of question is that? Of course it matters. When we go out here in gym class, we play a win, because every second counts. And this is the only way I can make it out of my hood. And once I make it out of the hood, we all make it out of the hood. Absolutely. You got to play to win the game. You can't slack off. You got to win. No losing. Unacceptable. Yes, it does. Because gym class relates to life. If you were not first, you were last. Gym class is also just like a normal academic class. You have to study what you're going to be doing. You have to work your hardest. And if you do not work hard, you will get an F. You have to try your best. If you're not first, you're last. Finally, we took it a step further, questioning teachers on whether they encourage their students to be competitive in their classes. I just encourage them to challenge themselves and not worry about what everybody else is doing. Uh, yeah, of course. I always do because really it pushes them to do better. It pushes them to really try to get better scores. And when we're competing, like say in phys ed, like to, you know, just do better in the games and learn the sport and get a better, you know, just really pushes them to just work harder, really, pretty much. I'm Ashley Arizini, signing off. All food baskets are due to A126 by 8.30 a.m. this Friday. All items for the food drive are due by 9.30 a.m. at the automatic doors. Tickets for the all-school comedy Moon Over Buffalo are now on sale. Tickets are $8 in advance and $10 at the door. 
See Senior Joe in B225 or a play representative during your lunch for tickets. There will be a mandatory winter track meeting on Thursday, October 18th in B125 during tutorial. All boys and girls planning on participating this season must be in attendance. The Everything Made Club will be meeting after school on Thursday, November 18th in room A230. If you are interested in joining, then please see Mrs. Meisner in A230. Now let's take a look for the week's five-day forecast. Rain tomorrow with a high of 62. Tomorrow will stay wet with some AM showers and a high of 64. It clears up later in the week, but it begins to get cold with highs of 57 on Thursday and 51 on Friday. Saturday should be mostly sunny with a high of 56. That is all for this week's five-day forecast. And that's all for RV Insider. I'm Gabrielle Turkanian. And I'm Courtney Gavin. Thanks for watching.